YouTube is flooded with good and bad videos, but since a short time, a new hidden trend catched my eye. A genre completely changed directions. Today we take a deep dive into documentary editing. This video style developed from boring interviews from historians to these cinematic masterpieces which are telling us the forgotten stories of history. One of the most known channels in this topic mastered not only the art of storytelling but also visually assisting it. This channel is owned by Johnny Harris. There are three important video elements that are reoccurring in almost every one of these videos and today we will be creating them from the ground up. The oldest technique in this video was invented by this guy. He needed a way to make still images look alive in a video. So he used small zoom-ins to highlight the essence of his stills. Today Johnny Harris developed this method even further and often adds this projector animation to his stills. So let's have a look at how we implement these two effects in DaVinci Resolve. If you're using another editing software, don't worry, you can easily do this too. To achieve the can burn, you simply keyframe a size increase from the start to the end of the clip. For the projector animation, we have to work a little bit harder. In the fusion page, add a transform node to your image, then keyframe the end position and at the start move it a bit down. Then smooth out the animation curve in the spline window. To sell the effect even more, set a checkbox for motion blur and add a Gaussian blur node which fades out with the animation. And lastly, add a shutter sound effect with the right timing to your clip. The best stylistic device to show evidence is by displaying articles on the topic. But today it is not that easy to get original sources as physical books or newspapers from years ago. So you need to get a bit creative. Search for articles online or let ChatGPT write some text for you. Then use textures, noise notes and clever compositions to make them look like a vintage newspaper. Another great effect to convince your audience of the quality of the evidence is by using match cuts of a few words. To create this, you need to find the same word in multiple locations of newspapers and other sources. Then drag them into your timeline and use an adjustment clip with a grid effect to align them. Now cut them down to only a few frames. Try to start with longer clips and then speed up. To make the word of the match cut stand out even more, take a marker overlay and give it a color. Then go back to the edit page and set the composite mode to darken. Then spread it out over all of the clips. Chapter 3 Rebuild Past Events To drag your viewer even more into the story, you need to make it as easy as possible to comprehend the circumstances. And what better way is there than creating a 3D animation of this event? For this, we use another free software called Blender. This method is currently not used by Johnny Harris but other high quality documentary channels and I want to share it with you. Search up a map online and download it as a SVG file. Then install Blender and go to File, Import and click on Scalable Vector Graphics SVG. Now you can select your map in the file browser and import it. We can't see it yet because it is quite small and this cube is in the way. So select the cube and delete it. Then head to the top right of your screen and right click on the collection which contains the map. 
click on select objects. Now all parts of the map are selected and we can scale them up. To do this, hit S on your keyboard. If you move your mouse, the map scales up. But what you also can do is type a number on your keyboard. For example, let's press 50, 50. Our map is now 50 times bigger than from the start. Next, let's select a country. In my case, I will choose Germany. Now, hit Shift D on your keyboard to duplicate it. And when you accidentally moved your mouse, you can just right click to reset its position. Let's move it a little bit up by pressing G and Z. And with the mouse, we can control the height. To create the outline, go to the Curve tab and change the shape type to 3D. On the fill mode, change it from half to full. And down here, you can increase the depth. Now, if we zoom out a little bit, you can see that this created a huge blob. So what we will do is making the depth way smaller. And I'm seeing right now that our outline is under our map. So let's move it a little bit up with G plus Z and let's make the outline a little bit less bulky. I want to make my outline red, so let's select it, go to the material tab, remove the old one, make a new one and let's change the base color to red. If you're wondering why you can't see it now, it's because we are in a clay view. So let's change the view and now we can also see the color. This base color would be fine, but I want to make it light up. And you can do this with the emission down here. So let's change this to red and let's increase the strength. As you can see, there is not much of a change here because we still need to adjust some things. Let's start by changing our view to the rendered view mode so we can see what's going on. In the render settings, turn on ray tracing. And now our last killer of our glow effect is this light in this scene. So let's just delete it. Now we have a beautifully glowing border. What's left is animating our camera. So let's position our viewport as we want to have our first frame and then press Ctrl Alt 0 to set the camera to this view. Now let's make this timeline down here a little bit bigger so we can see it better and select the camera. You can click on the frame. What you also can do to select the camera is select it in the inspector on the top right. Move the playhead to the first frame and then with the camera selected, head over to the settings tab. Here you can keyframe the camera just as in DaVinci Resolve. Then move the player to frame, let's say frame 50 and let's adjust our viewer and press Ctrl Alt Numpad 0 again to set our camera to this second angle. Now, as you can see, we have cut off a little bit of our country on the top here and we can just select the border of our camera and then move it around by pressing G and locking on the axis, for example, GZ to move it up and then GY and GX to move it left and right. Now I have centered it and we can go down to the timeline and press I to insert our keyframes. Before we render our scene, we will enable motion blur and on the output page, we will change the file type to FFmpeg video. Then go to the top left and render your animation. This is what mine looks like. Blender is really powerful. For example, this scene I have also created with Blender. And if you want to have more tutorials on Blender in combination with DaVinci Resolve, please let me know in the comments down below.